You know, there's nothing like cracking that, that cellophane and pulling that record out. It just smells great. Welcome to Buzz Mayhem Hour. Non-stop hardcore energy. I love the show, guys. You're awesome. Yeah. Unlike any other. With your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Man, this stuff rocks. Hello, this is Burton C. Bell from Ascension of the Watchers. And you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Radio Network, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Radio Network. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. the Bod Father. And as always, I'm bringing you guys and gals awesome interviews. Today, it's an honor and a very huge privilege to welcome Burton C. Bell of Ascension of the Watchers and of Fear Factory. Ascension of the Watchers will release their second full-length album entitled Apocrypha, Friday, October 9th via Dissonance Productions. Apocrypha follows Ascension of the Watchers' debut Numinosum album released in 2008 and their most recent album Storm Crow released in 2019. So Burton, man, welcome to the show and uh, glad you got some more music out there, dude. Yeah, I'm, uh, well, first of all, pleasure speaking with you, John the Bod. <laughs> all is well. Yeah, I'm very proud of this record. Um, actually, the, the what you mentioned Storm Crow, that Storm Crow became Apocrypha. And Storm Crow was the Edge music campaign that we started. It was the title of the album. Well, it was the going title of the album when we started the Pledge Music Campaign. And after the Pledge Music Campaign, or after the platform of Pledge Music failed everyone by going bankrupt, uh, failing the bands and the Pledgers, the album continued. We continued recording the album despite the failure. And uh, as we went along recording and mixing, the album evolved, and I took the artistic liberty of changing the name. So what have you been up to during this crazy pandemic other than talking and promoting the new album entitled Apocrypha? <laughs> Man, what, what have you been doing that uh, maybe some folks wouldn't think you would be doing right now? Well, um, to be honest, my routine didn't change that much when the, pan- when the lockdown hit. My wife and I are kind of homebodies to begin with. Other than, you know, we go to the movies frequently and we, we like going to restaurants a couple times a month and occasionally going out for cocktails. You know, that changed. But other than that, we, we stayed at home a lot. And watched, we watch movies at home. We watch TV. Um, I have been, more, you know, I have been a bit more creative working on my uh, stories that I have uh, wanna, that I've been writing couple different stories at the same time but mostly i've been working on the story that will be related to this album apocrypha uh you know it's a i'm releasing it i'm writing it like ancient texts that were found and have uh, re-emerged for the for the uh, masses so it's like reading like ancient texts kind of ancient stories uh so i've been doing that we're working on that two or three months uh it's been you know it's it's difficult writing, but it's challenging, but also uh, inspirational at the same time. But uh, um, other than that, just been writing, um, walking, you know, staying with my wife. We've been watching the Law and Order marathons that's been going on and off. <laughs> and that's about it. That's about it. See, man, you sound about like me. I'm a homebody. I, other than go watch a concert and maybe hang out with a couple of friends, that's about it, other than do my podcast, of course. No, that, that's the one thing that has changed. I used to go see shows a lot, and that is uh, tragic. That's something tragic that's happened to all of us, the, the lack of shows. Yeah, but, you know, a lot of bands are picking up the live streaming thing, and I think that's cool, which that was there a long time ago. Was that your guy's fingertips? <laughs> and now it's come to the forefront, and that's cool. I'm glad a lot of bands are branching out this way. As a matter of fact, uh, the Watchers, we we are planning to do the same. Uh, I was inspired by watching uh, the Nick Cave. Nick Cave did a uh, concert, a streaming concert, live. Well, it wasn't live, but it was he was uh, alone at the Alexandra Palace. So it was this beautiful location, just him at a piano. And I uh, want to do the same thing to for the Watchers. We want to uh, record it in a very special place 
and make a live concert and uh, stream it for for our fans. So it's something that we're planning. It's in the planning stages right now, so watch out for that. In early 2002, you retreated to Pennsylvania for seven months uh, with bandmate John Bechtel, escaping the onslaught of Los Angeles, plus the industry, things like that. Did he help you on a creative path? Did, how much of an impact did he make on you to go down this path for you? Well, John, you know, John got John came into my uh, world uh, in 1998 when Fear Factory was finishing up the recording of Obsolete, and uh, we were looking for a new keyboard player for live music. And uh, Reese Forber was the one who uh, recommended him, and uh, so John flew out to Canada while we were recording to learn all the music and all that. And uh, you know, it was during the touring process of Obsolete and Digimortal that John and I became very near and dear friends. We were the two guys that always shared a room uh, on days off. We'd be hanging out, exploring cities and just hanging out, you know, uh, talking. And as, as I learned more about John, John and I had a lot in common when it came to music. Uh, we had the same type of musical taste and the same type of musical concepts and ideas about recording. So when I took that sabbatical from LA and drove to Pennsylvania to stay with John in his studio, uh, it was a very great experience for me. I had a bunch of ideas that uh, I recorded onto uh, a four-track tape recorder, but I had these ideas, but they weren't fully re- realized until I went to Pennsylvania. And John helped me uh, help, uh, visualize these ideas. He helped me record them. Uh, he helped me uh, arrange them and build upon them over time in those seven months. And it was a great it was a great experience for me to be literally sequestered in his studio for months at a time, uh, just working on this music, uh, spending time you know in the countryside of Pennsylvania. It was beautiful, it was pastoral, bucolic. It was just amazing, and uh, I fell in love with Pennsylvania so much that I left LA and moved to Pennsylvania. I was like, this place rules. So uh, you know, because of John and his inspiration that he helped me visualize. Uh, in his studio, you know, working on the music and, the, and towards the type of music that was I that my heart and soul wanted to was trying to release for a long time, and he helped me become a better musician, he helped me become a better producer, and uh, just you know, uh, and realize my my own style of music when it comes to my own music. So that's you know, John was a big big help in that. So was this a, a, a breath of fresh air for you coming from Fear Factory and then to Ascension of the Watchers? Because, you know, w- with all this new stuff happening, was this, uh, you know, a, a breath of fresh air for you? Was this a new beginning? Absolutely. It was a breath of fresh air because, uh, you know, as, as proud as I am of the music that we all have created as Fear Factory, I feel that doesn't really describe the music that I want to do on my own. So... All the music from the Watchers comes from my mind. Either I start writing on guitar or I start writing on piano. Either way, I realize that I come up with the chords, uh, depending on what mood or what whatever I'm feeling at the time, and uh, I make the chords into an arrangement. And that's it's when I have an arrangement that I can remember and uh, uh, can play again, that I will uh, go to like John's house or John's studio, or I went to a dude's studio, or Jason's studio, and uh, we record the parts. So I did that over time. But uh, yeah, it was a breath of fresh air. You know, For me, Ascension of the Watchers is truly the music of my soul. Apocrypha has been in development for nearly a decade. Now having the album ready to release, does it feel good to finally have it to be released and to move on, sort of say, on, on what Ascension of the Watchers want to do from now. Absolutely. It's um, it's something I've been looking forward to for a very long time. Uh, like, it's, like I said, or like you said, for years it's been in the works. Now, over the years, I have you know been trying to uh, get labels and, and people interested uh, to, you know, th- to make it possible for me to release it, to record and release. And uh, that's proved to be very difficult over the years. So uh, it, it took uh, it took to re- actually recording the album the way I wanted it to be recorded for it to be heard. 
and for it to be to get people interested. And this Dissonance was able when Dissonance heard the label that they hands down wanted it. And so it was you know it was it's been a long and difficult process and so it's very re- rewarding and relieving at the same time. And uh, I'm looking forward to actually playing the, these songs live, which is for me the best way to hear music in general. Uh, you know, it's because of the live shows we've done in the past. For instance, after we released Newman Knows and we did some live shows, and it was during those live shows that we did, is when I realized that it's the live essence that I want to really convey for Ascension of the Watchers. It's that live feeling, that power, that, uh, that, that sonic power, that, uh, and uh, the organic sense of it that I really want people to hear. So that's the most, for me, the most exciting part is to give it we'll be playing these live because that's when it's going to be really, really cool. And folks, I, I want to say this right now, and I'm not saying this just because Burton's on here and all that stuff, but listen, this band took shot after shot and got knocked down after knocked down trying to put this album together. So for them to still keep on the road to do this speaks volumes. So they was really, really uh, adamant on getting this album out. So kudos to you guys that's for right. that. <laughs> well, thank you. And uh, to add to that, because we did it on our own with, with uh, only only with the help of the pleasures who believed in us, but with with that doing it on our own, we were able to create the record we wanted to without any influence. Uh, this is as you know, it's very original, very personal, and uh, and it's very deliberate yeah. of the way we wanted to record it. Now speaking of getting knocked down again. <laughs> Now you're putting this album out during a pandemic. Uh, are, are, were you guys a little nervous about putting this out right now, or did you just say, no, we've got it, let's just go? Well, yeah, there's apprehension, uh, but, you know, there's bands doing it. You know, um, even though there's, you know, like the lack of live shows and live music is the way these days bands can survive and musicians can survive, um, we feel that during this pandemic, People are listening to music and supporting the artists that they, you know, really want to support through streaming or buying their merch or buying their albums. So, either way, getting it out there is the most important part. And uh, when it comes to eventuality of touring, uh, the the album will have been out there for a while. People will be familiar with it, and uh, hopefully, the, the word the word will get out that the album's out. And, People are loving it, uh, and uh, hopefully they'll. When it comes time to touring, they'll support us live. So, you know, this, you know, pandemic or not, you know, we had to get it out there, and I think it's a great time for this record. It's something different. There's nothing out there that sounds like this album, so I think people are gonna be impressed. And uh, you know, some, you know, it's not for everybody, but for it is for a lot of people. I think they're really, really, it's really resonating with a lot of people right now during this pandemic. But it's different, and, and, and I think that's what adds flavor to the music world right now. Like you said, you know, people need music right now. So, hey, maybe everybody can step up and, and dig to this album. I certainly hope so. I think there's something for everyone in this record. Burton, what's impressed or excited you the most about making the album Apocrypha? If anything, man, going all the way back to the start to the finish, is there anything that impresses you about it? This album sounds way better than I anticipated. That's what impresses me the most. Uh, the the work, the mix, and the production that Jace Lewis was able to accomplish with this album just went beyond my expectations. So that, the production is what has impressed me the most. I never expected something like this. I expected something good, of course, and something sonic, sonically exciting, but Jace just made this even more uh, of an ex- more than an experience, and he made it something that will stand the test of time. Going forward with the sound of this album, is this what you're wanting to do with Ascensions of the Watchers, or are you wanting to expand out there upon or above that horizon? As an artist, I always want to expand. I always want to experiment, and I always want to uh, try different things. So in the future, uh, the music... You know, the music always comes from me. So 
the music, there's always going to be a, uh, a very familiar sound to the watchers. My melody, the way I come up with arrangements, I have a very melancholic sense of melody. So there always will be that, but I want to experiment and, uh, expand on uh the watchers maybe production and just the you know ideas of sound you know just move forward and do different things but you know it'll always be the you know that's gonna be the nature of the sense of the watchers as uh, art- artistic expansion any tracks standing out more to you than any right now on the album i know it must change you every time you listen to it i know these are your babies burton but do you have any that stick out for you personally Song, a wolf interlude has been stuck in my mind for the past couple of days. Um, it's a you know it's a song, it's a beautiful song. I love it, and all these songs you know like you said are babies, but they're also very personal. They're about a specific event or a specific person that I've written about. So each song is dedicated, and uh, a wolf interlude is dedicated to my son, and uh, you know his name is you know his middle name is Wolf, so it's uh, a play on his name. So. Uh, yeah, um, for, I think right now a wolf interlude is to me the the song that really kind of sums up the entire record at this point for me. It, it touches upon uh, you know not just production, but it's the 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 nature of the sound, the depth of the sound, the lyrical content. Uh, the voice, it's all there, and uh, I just think it's a beautiful song. Was there a song that you guys were working on that totally ended up sounding different or, or took a major turn that kind of surprised you? Yeah, uh, the song after A Wolf Interlude, the song On Array, made a major turn, mostly in the the, the, produ- the mixing production side. You know, Jace was mixing the song, and we were, you know, it was... It wasn't really like it was a good song, but it, it felt like we both felt that it could have done there could have been more to it. So we decided to really uh, almost start taking things out because I wanted a more intimate point of the verses. It needed to be more intimate, and it was Jason's production call to try this idea of like uh, a mellotron type of effect on both in the verses, and he was inspired by another band. They heard a few years back called Imaging Heap, who uh, is an artist that really experiments with technology. There's this uh, Mellotron effect that this person did on their voice that Chase wanted to try on this because we were both looking for almost like a chorus type of thing where it's like multiple voices at the same time intertwining and layering. And uh, so we tried this Mellotron effect, layering the voices to make it almost like a choir. And when he did that, I go, oh, my God, that sounds amazing. Cut all the instruments out, just the voice. So when he did that, that changed the song completely for me. And it just, it just heightened the, the intimate nature of the verses. Because when I, wanted the, I really wanted the chorus to pop when it really hit, when, it, when the chorus came in. And Jace accomplished it tenfold. I was like, wow you really made this different and uh it made it for the better was really impressed i thought this was kind of cool when i was looking at this this album was actually recorded in north stone studios based in countryside of south wales is that correct yep that's right you know the story behind this folks is insane because this this guy hand built this back with the bricks that was part of the 250 year old court coleman manor a monastery so he built it back with his own hands. Uh, tell me about this, man. How was, how was the atmosphere at that place? Well, uh, you know, it's a beautiful place. So North Stone Studios was built in, uh, in the countryside of uh, South Wales, uh, out, outside of a little town called Bridge End. Uh, it's connected to a 250-year-old manor called the Court Coleman Manor. The, the manor stands on the grounds of an ancient monastery, Jace built his studio in the section that the it was like an old shed. It was an old stone shed that they had like you know, hay and tools and stuff like that. And uh, Chase bought that area and he um, kept some of the old stonework, which was part of the original monastery. But the rest of the stones were like kind of scattered around the grounds. So Jace collected those stones 
and built like classically built the stones like matching you know building a wall and like laying the stones and mortar and just building it almost like puzzle pieces on top of each other he he, he literally built this the studio by hand and it's three different rooms you know it's not a big studio it's three different rooms each room is what um 10 by 15 and so and you walk into the middle which is like 10 by 15 and then the live room what the drum room is 10 by 15 it's separated by uh, the glass doors and then the uh, control room to the right is 10 by 15 and you know there's a door a wooden door that goes into it so it's a, just a beautiful you know perfect studio it's a modern analog studio so it's using like neve strips and ro- and, and rossers and just a lot of uh, analog compressors going into modern technology which is pro tools uh and just the just the, the area you know it's it's uh you when you go to the studio you're sequ- even though it's connected to a manor which is it's a small hotel uh you're still sequestered there's n- no cell service if I want to get any kind of service, I got to go into the manor to get on Wi-Fi. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I walk outside, you walk and you're looking over the country, you know, rolling green hills and trees of South Wales. It's very bucolic. It's beautiful. And, uh, you know, it's a lot, there's a lot of, a lot of energy on the grounds. You can just feel it. So to me, the first time I went there was a few years ago, maybe 2016. And, uh, we demoed the the songs uh, Ghost Heart and the song The End Is Always The Beginning. And uh, we did those in two weeks. And that's when I realized after recording the demos there, I was like, we have to record the record here. This is, this is the perfect place to do it, not just for the studio environment and the studio capabilities, but just the whole vibe of it. It's just, just what I've been looking for for 10 years. So yeah, we've it's taken a long time. We've had a you know we would you know we, we had a lot of setbacks. We had a lot of uh, you know being the door down of labels and you know the whole time it all led up to this point. So it was supposed to happen. Who did the amazing artwork for this album? The artist is named Matt Grundy. He's an English artist. He's worked. He actually used to be the guitar was he a guitar player? for pitch shifter years ago hmm. and uh, he, he left the band and became an artist he does he does a lot of work for bands uh, in the UK uh, but Chase knows him and uh, Chase uh, when we were trying to do the album artwork Chase uh, gave me his phone number and we started talking so um, I had this image from I found online uh, of another photographer named Nick Brandt so I called him and I I wanted to use that image as the album cover, but Nick, you know, after speaking to Nick Brandt, he respectfully declined. You know, he doesn't want his art being involved with music whatsoever. Understood. So I had to uh, come up with another idea. So when I was speaking to Matt, I was showing him, you know, I showed him the artwork, but I also told him what else I was looking for. And, uh, you know, this is something I've always done with artists from the very beginning of Fear Factory was to work with the artist doing the album cover because I am the one who, you know, I have a vision. I'm the one who can, um, who can explain it and who can help the artist understand what we're looking for. I, I'm the, you know, I'm the word guy. And so, you know, I've done that with Dave McKean. I've done that with Steve Niles. I've done that with Tom German. Uh, so doing this with, uh, with, uh, Matt Grundy was easy. And, you know, after talking to Matt, he had a few examples, and one example was, which I which just spoke to me, was like was the one that became the album cover. I go, that's it, and uh, he he totally got it. He's he's uh, he's a good listener, and he's a fantastic artist. What do you hope everyone takes away, or message you hope they hear while listening to any of Ascension of Watchers music in general? Well, um, it's a good question. Um, you know, uh, music, you know, you can't please everybody. And that's something I've come to understand, and, you know, through my 30 years in the industry. But, uh, you know, what I hope that people do understand is that when they listen to this, this the, uh, the Apocrypha album, I hope they realize that this is the music 
that truly comes from my soul. This is all music that comes from Burton C. Bell. This is, you know, if they ever had any question of the type of music I'm into, there should be no question at all after you hear this record because this is entirely my personality. Oh, I want to step back here just just for one second. Ask this question as well: Were there any tracks that did not make this album that we could see down the line on another EP or a possible another album? Maybe. Uh, no, every track made the album. So, what made you want to become a musician? If you can recall, Burton, what what was it sparked for you that said, "Yeah, I wanted I want to try this"? Yeah, it's funny. I kind of I've, I've wanted to be a, uh, a musician my whole life. Uh, you know, I've always considered myself an artist. So, uh, you know, being a musician is, is in the realm of being an artist. So I've always wanted to just, I've always loved singing. I've always loved music. Uh, so it's, it's that, you know, it's that dream of mine to be in a band my entire life that really led me to, you know, be in a band and be a musician. It's just, you know, it's, it's a calling and it's a calling I had to answer. I know that you've been in music for a very long time, of course, success with Fear Factory plus other things you've done. But is there a country that stands out or shocks you right now that Ascension of the Watchers get support from, or maybe your guys' music gets played in, possibly? Um, you know, uh, the the Watchers uh, gets a lot of support in the UK, which is uh, you know not surprising to me. Fear Factory has always been. Fear Factory was accepted more popularly in the UK than it was uh, in the United States, uh, firstly. Um, so the UK, not so surprising. Uh, you know, Australia is the same. Uh, they've been very you know, supportive from the very beginning. Not really sure. Um, you know, I, if it gets accepted in Russia, that'll, then I'll be really surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I know you had a lot of music growing up and a lot of albums, but did you have a go-to album or song when you were younger that, you know, affected you as far as giving you inspiration or just made you relax and just escape for a couple hours? Uh, yeah, there's quite a few songs over my history, but there's one first song that came to mind. Is, uh, is, is the live version of Bad by U2, and it's off of a, it's off of um, an EP. Uh, what was it called? Not was it Wide Awake? Yeah, it's called Wide Awake in America. And there's only four. It's a four song EP, and it was a sort of Homecoming Live, and it was Bad Live, and uh, it's that version of Bad that just I I still get chills listening to it. It's like the perfect song uh, for me, lyrically, uh, sonically, uh, the arrangement, the the, the performance. Uh, you, you can't top it. It's just you know that's the song I want to I want played at my funeral. Folks, you want to get out and pick up Ascension of the Watchers' new album that's going to come out, new full-length album entitled Apocrypha, Friday, October 9th via Dissonance Productions. And you definitely want to pick that up. So, Burton, how can folks stay in touch with you guys, buy some merchandise, all this stuff when it gets back to normal? How can you do that, good sir? Well, um, all the information is available on the Ascension of the Watchers uh, website, uh, also on my Burton Bell website, on our Facebooks, uh, on, on all social media, you can uh, pre-order the album in North America or UK. Then we're building a merch store right now that'll be open by the time the album's released on October 9th. So just just uh, watch, uh, you know, our social media for all the information, uh, either on Facebook or Instagram or our personal websites. Before I let you go, Burton, would you care to do a promo for my show? Uh, absolutely, let's do it. Hello, this is Burton C. Bell from Ascension of the Watchers, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Everybody stick around. We got some great, great stuff coming up, and you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour and Bod's Mayhem Hour podcast. Please get out and check out our Facebook page. It has our podcast link and our YouTube link, and please subscribe to our YouTube link. And also subscribe to all the platforms that we are on, and trust me, we're on a lot of platforms. 
please pick up Ascension of the Watchers' new album that's getting ready to come out, Apocrypha, Friday, October 9th, via Dissonance Productions. You will not be disappointed. So, Burton, thank you as a fan for all the years, you know, Fear Factory, Ascension of the Watchers. Thank you guys so, so much for what, what you all are still doing right now. My pleasure, John, and thank you for your support. Without people like you, I would never come this far, so thank you. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.